Okay, so let's go ahead and actually expand on our last tutorial. So um, for that, let's shoot over to brushes and make sure we've got the uh, topology brush selected. And let's zoom into our model and uh, let's create some basic uh, geometry. And for that, I'm going to create these uh, curve lines and then create something like a cube. Um, so it looks like this. So when we click on the actual model, um, we've got a nice little cube here. Okay, so let's zoom out of that and uh, let's go over to our uh, subtool dropdown. Now, what you'll notice here is that we have two objects, yet for some reason, um, the actual cube exists within the same layer as the actual genes, which could cause some issues for us. Now, if you're anything like me, I find it a lot easier to work when I have uh, little sub objects uh, existing within inside their own layers. Uh, so how do we go about taking this little cube and placing it on its own layer? Well, for that, uh, let's go ahead and clear the mask. And, um, and over here we've got something called split. Now, avoid using group split. And the reason for that is, is because if we go ahead and click on this little uh, cube and zoom into it and turn on polyframe, you'll notice that this cube is made up of multiple polygroups. So if we go ahead and hit group split, uh, what you'll end up doing is not only splitting the actual uh, cube from the actual genes, uh, you'll end up splitting uh, the cube into its own little bits and pieces. That's going to cause some problems. And I'll show you what I mean by that a little bit later on. Uh, instead, what you want to do is hold down control shift and click on the actual genes themselves. So once you've done that, you'll notice how this little cube disappears. Now you have the option of holding down control shift and inverting that selection um, or not. It's really up to you. Uh, the point is, is once you've done that, uh, an extra button appears called split hidden. Now, when you click on that, what it does, it takes anything that's no longer visible on the actual model and it places it on its own separate layer. And that's probably the most effective way of, um, of splitting the, uh, the sub object from the, uh, the original parent object. Uh, let's go ahead and click on the actual uh, cube itself. Let's turn on polyframe and hit solo and zoom into that. In fact, let's click on it and zoom into it a little easier that way. Okay, so if we go ahead and utilize group split like I do now, hit OK, you'll notice that all that end up happening is that it's basically taken this object and it's placed it in, uh, in separate layers. And as you can see, it's split up all the different groups and that, you know, that's not what you want. And that's essentially why I said avoid the group split button. So anyway, let's go ahead and delete that. Um, for that, we go and hit delete, hit always OK. Uh, delete this one as well and that one. Just be careful not to actually delete the genes themselves. So turn off solo and polyframe and zoom out a little bit. Okay, so the other thing that you guys should be aware of is um, is basically the option of creating loops around certain services. Now by that, I mean if I go ahead and click on this thing and pull out with my uh, curve line, I could also hit shift on the keyboard. And when I do that, I could actually create a loop around the actual object, which makes it easier for me to create quick topology uh, over the top of this mesh. So basically I can do that again, click and drag out, hit shift, creating a loop and, uh, and let go of that. And that way I could create really quick, um, kind of like uh, a rough topology uh, like so, and, uh, and just go ahead and and create the little bits and pieces that I want and go right around this thing. It just saves me the trouble of, um, of clicking and dragging out and then spinning around, clicking and dragging out. And again, having to go a full 360 degrees uh, around this thing before I could actually join it up to itself. Um, this way, if you just simply click on an area, drag out, hit shift, you create a loop. And uh, keep in mind as well um, that the brush actually conforms to the actual surface of the object you're applying the uh, curve line to, which is why you might have uh, slightly wobbly results uh, every now and then. But um, just something to be aware of, guys. The other option you have, um, basically click and drag out and hit uh, shift on the keyboard. You also have the option of using the actual space bar. So if I go ahead and hit the space bar now, and uh, whilst I'm holding down shift, I could actually move this thing up or down uh, along the actual leg. And that comes in really, really handy. So um, sometimes basically what I end up doing is uh, finding a nice flat area or a nice, um, you know, reasonably even area and clicking and dragging out, getting a nice straight line, then using the, uh, the space bar and placing the geometry where or the uh, curve line where I need it. 
and um, and I usually get pretty good results that way. Um, one last thing before I actually move on to a different section is um, if we shoot over to Stroke over here, we've got an option called Lazy Mouse. Now if we go ahead and uh, click on that, uh, inside here we've got an actual Lazy Mouse button. Click on that and at the moment the actual Lazy Radius is set to 1. And what that does, when we click and drag, you get this little tail that sort of follows your cursor. And that just makes it a little bit easier for us to create straighter lines. Um, let me show you what I mean. If I go to Stroke and I actually increase the actual lazy radius, the tail gets longer and it's easier for me to create smoother and straighter lines. And of course you could set it to the maximum setting and, uh, and so forth. And uh, basically it becomes kind of like a, an elastic band sort of following you around. But nevertheless, um, it's a pretty handy little tool to have. So anyway, let's go ahead and reset everything. And, um, and I'll see you back here in about two seconds. One of the other things that you guys should probably be aware of is the use of symmetry when it comes to curve lines. Now, the good thing about uh, using curve lines is that you could go ahead and you could uh, basically do whatever you've got to do on one side of your model and at any point when you're up to it you could simply go to uh, transform and turn on activate symmetry and at the moment I got mine set at the x-axis which means um, it basically shows up on this side over here so if we go ahead and click on this model you could see that uh, not only did we create kind of like a little bit of geometry here we also created geometry on uh, on the other side and this uh, this works with all curve lines not just uh, the topology brush and uh, we can go ahead and then go to uh, transform. We could even go as far as turning on radial symmetry and even any of these other axes if we, uh, if we wanted to. So let's go ahead and just uh, click on the actual model now. And as you can see, we've got radial symmetry switched on uh, that allows us to sort of create all these different bits and pieces like so. So anyway, let's go ahead and, um, and move on to the next part of this tutorial.